logic board replacement for iMac 27 inch 2012 through 2015. We'll need the following tools, two plastic pick prying tools, one metallic prying tool, tweezers, double sided M3 tape, and a tool kit as well as a blow dryer. Let's begin by disconnecting the power cable from the back of the iMac. Go ahead and turn on the blow dryer starting in the top left corner and go around the contour of the iMac. Make sure to have the setting on high and do this for about 7 minutes. After the display is nice and warm, go ahead and pry in with your metallic prying tool at the top left corner. Pry in about half an inch in and go all the way around the entire contour of the iMac. Once you've broken the seal with the metallic tool, go ahead and start with the plastic tool to widen the gap. Take the plastic prying tool, stick it in the same slot and just go all the way around the edges again. Now it's grabbing at each top corner, go ahead and clamp open the iMac up top. Be very careful, once you start cracking this open, there are two connections that are connected to the iMac in the top right quadrant. Let's take a closer look. The connections are the video data cable and the power cable. The video data cable needs to be unlatched first. So with your tweezers, go ahead and pry in underneath and grab the little black tape and pull away from the iMac and the lever and push it up like so. Now you can go ahead and pull out the data cable. The next cable, the power cable, has two plastic clips that should be pressed in from the side but they hardly ever work so just pulling it out carefully should do the trick. Now we can lower the screen and break the seal of the tape on the bottom and separate it from the iMac. To separate the speakers we're going to need a Torx 10 screwdriver bit. The speakers are secured with two T10 screws. Go ahead and loosen up those screws now. With the screws loose, you can go ahead and start prying out the speaker. Go ahead and disconnect the power button that runs along the speaker first. Now start working the speaker out. You might feel a lot of resistance. Be very careful when you're pulling the speaker out for the first time. Now trace out the actual speaker cable that connects it to the logic board. Go ahead and pull that out. Now you can carefully work the power button out of the speaker and just pull it out just like that. The right speaker is also secured with two T10 screws. Go ahead and loosen up those screws now. With the two T10 screws loose, now go ahead and disconnect the speaker that's connected right there just pull it out just like that now go ahead tilt it and work it out you should feel a lot of resistance pulling this one out the fan is held in with three t10 screws one on the right one up top and one on the left side with all the screws out of the way you can carefully pop out the connection to the fan that connects it to the logic board the power supply is secured with four T10 screws and it's plugged into the logic board. Go ahead and disconnect the power supply from the logic board by pinching it and prying it back and forth side to side. Now go ahead and remove the four T10 screws. The two top ones are long and then the two bottom ones are the short ones. Unhooking the power supply from the logic board is a little tricky. Once you have the screws off, go ahead and push it out in the following orientation. Now, it's connected to the logic board in two places. The bottom cord you can pinch with your screwdriver 
and pinch the connection off. And now you can get to the big connection to the logic board and press that in and pull it out. It's a little difficult and it's going to take some playing around with it, but it should be able to get done in a pinch. The logic board is held in in 10 places. There are six basic screws that are t T10 screws that are holding the board. The seventh tricky one is in that hole right there in the center. And we'll get to the other ones later. The following need to be disconnected first. Go ahead and pop out the audio in jack first. Now go ahead and pry open and pop out the iSight camera and all the antennas that are connecting to the Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. You can reach around and push out that SATA hard drive cable from the back. Now let's go ahead and get rid of those six T10 screws that are holding down the logic board. With those six out of the way, we can go ahead and get to the screws we were talking about earlier. There are two up top right here as you see near the exit system fan. Go ahead and remove the one on the right and the one on the left. Now we'll need to remove a tricky T20 post that's on the side right here. As you can see, there's two screws. There's one T10 screw and there's a post right beside it. The post needs to come out first. Go ahead and remove that T20 post right there. With the post removed, you can reach in and get that T10 screw. Now get the T10 screw from the center of the logic board. With the final 10th screw out of the way, we can go ahead and start wiggling the logic board out of its socket. Now make sure that you don't feel any resistance and nothing else is attached. It should be able to relatively easily come out. You can see the hard drive cable uh, has a secondary part that's attached to the uh, logic board. Disconnect that and we're done. iMac logic board installation. Begin the installation by hooking up the SATA cable to the rear of the logic board. You can go ahead and connect both sides of the cable to the logic board. With those connected, go ahead and start seating the board into its socket. Wiggle it around and push it in there, making sure you're not blocking off any of the connections. Go ahead and secure the board with one T10 screw just to hold it in place for the moment. Now, once it's held in place, go ahead and secure the two system fan screws up top. Go ahead and come in from the side with that T10 side screw the one that's uh, difficult to get to, the one that you have to take the post off for, you can use an extension to remove it. Now, once you got that in, go ahead and place the T20 post back in. With that secured, go ahead and resecure the rest of the six T10 screws going around the contour of the logic board, and of course, the seventh T10 screw mounting the logic board, which is in the center in that hidden little hole. Next, let's reconnect the I.O. port, the Bluetooth cables, and the uh, EyeSight cable. Go ahead and push that uh, in audio port in right into that socket. Now, with these antennas, you might have to play around with this. You want to hear a good solid click on each one. Uh, this is relatively uh, difficult to do, but can be done. Uh, go ahead and secure those. Once those are secure, go ahead and push in that eyesight. Once it's in, go ahead and lock it in with its latch. Reinstalling the power supply is a bit tricky. Go ahead and push in the main connection, connecting it to the logic board first. Now the bottom connection of the power supply. It's kind of hard to get it 
but he will figure it out I'm sure now place this the power supply back into the socket and secure it with the two long T10 screws up top first and then the two shorter T10 screws on the bottom of the power supply now reconnect the power supply connection on the front make sure that the power supply is connected in fact in three places reinstall the system fan by placing it into its position in the following orientation go ahead and secure it with the three t10 screws don't forget to plug the system fan back into the logic board when you're done go ahead and reinsert the speaker back into its original orientation go ahead and reconnect it while you have it loosely set in its socket once reconnected you can correct the speaker positioning inside of its socket so go ahead and just reconnect it first then position it and now you can go ahead and screw in the T10 screws once both of those screws is secured we can go ahead and move on to the left speaker move the power button cable out of the way make sure you don't jam that up that's very important go ahead and trace out the speaker cable along the hard drive and plug it back into the logic board go ahead and plug in the power cable back to the power supply this is very very important now use tweezers to tuck in that power cable With the power cable tucked in go ahead and secure the speaker with the two T10 screws we're now ready to put the screen back the most important part of a good reinstallation is to remove all residual double-sided tape from the contour of the iMac go all the way around make sure to remove all of it especially around the antennas Removing all the foam and double-sided tape allows for a good seal. Once you remove all of it, we can go ahead and apply double-sided M3 tape around the contour of the iMac where the screen is going to be attached. This is a time-consuming process but cannot be avoided. Go ahead and go all the way around the contour, make sure to apply double-sided tape everywhere that it was previously installed the next most crucial step is to remove the residual double-sided tape from the screen itself if you're reinstalling a refurbished screen or if this is just putting back your old screen this needs to be removed align the screen at the bottom of the iMac tilt it up go ahead and reconnect the power to the screen first now go ahead and reconnect the data cable by flipping the little lever down putting in the data cable making sure you hear a little click and then flipping down the lever and hear a little click again now we can fully clamshell the screen back to the iMac and apply some pressure all the way around where the double sided tape is. Applying general pressure all the way around should not be a skip step. Go ahead and make sure you go all the way around applying pressure squeezing the screen tight up against the frame even at the bottom. 